Hi, I'm Bleeptrick, a creative technologist working in the intersection of code, art and science. Join the ride and follow me on my journey. A few weeks ago, I created this wooden object with my laser cutter and I was so, so happy when I assembled it. Let me explain you why. I always wanted to write a generator that could create a 3D object of some sort. And when I was asked to create a kinetic sculpture for an event, I thought this would be a perfect match. So I started off with this generative shape. It looks a bit like a geometric asteroid, maybe. But the important part is that it has flat faces. It is created from a 3D box where I subtract another box, that's the red one you can see, um, that has a random position and a random rotation. From the resulting shape, I then calculate 2D parts that I can just throw on my laser cutter. And there are two different types, the faces and the angle connector parts. And all of these parts are slightly different. And that's why each part has its own number and the connectors show to which parts they belong. So they have two numbers showing. And now you can imagine why I was so happy when the assembly was successful. For several tries, I had some errors in the 3D to 2D projection. And then on, I don't know, maybe the third try, I finally had a successful cut and assembling it and seeing that it fits felt so great. But I told you it's a kinetic sculpture. So there were several more steps to finish this thing off. I decided to cover each face with a stretchy fabric. The easiest way to do this was just to glue it on. And I did several tests with different glues and found one that worked well and also did not discolor the fabric. It's a contact glue, so you have to let it dry for a moment and then press both parts together firmly. And to be really sure that the fabric would not come loose, I glued it on from both sides. Repeating this for all faces took quite a while and also the yellow sculpture got an even bigger blue brother. Next, the center of each sculpture received a little wooden mount for two servo motors. These would activate the movement. But what is moving? I attached little threads to each face's center and these run towards one of the servo arms. So one servo can pull on several strings and the fabric is then pulled inwards a bit. The idea was that the whole sculpture should look a bit like it's breathing or it becomes a living thing. Next, I had to reassemble and glue all the wooden parts. I only left one panel without glue so I can reopen the whole sculpture in case something breaks or goes wrong. And it's a very delicate structure and the servos will only do a very light pull, I'd say. They are, by the way, controlled by an ESP32 and that runs my custom code. And I thought it would be interesting to let the sculpture react a bit um, to their surroundings. And I knew of a project called Pax Counter that is used to estimate how many people are around by scanning Wi-Fi and Bluetooth signals. And luckily, the actual scanning library is a separate project called LibPax. And it's easy to use. So I ended up using lip packs to estimate the number of people around the sculpture and let it move or breathe more the more devices I found while scanning. I only finished both pieces right before setup day and the venue organizers prepared this black cross beam for me to hang both parts from. I attached transparent nylon threads and also the power cables needed to be attached. And well, there was no direct power outlet, so I just taped my big power bank to the construction and plugged both sculptures in. And even though the movement, and even though I think the movement could have been a bit more visible, I am extremely proud of this project. Most of it was done in only one week. And well, I was really exhausted in the end. But it is a great example of an interdisciplinary project between mathematics, computer science and art. I hope you enjoyed this little peek behind the scenes of my project Parameter Space, 
The source code is already available on GitHub if you want to take a look. Though hand with care, it's not really in a very useful state, but I already have some nice ideas on what uh, future pr projects I can build with it. And if you found this interesting, please follow me here on YouTube or on other social media sites. There's also a Patreon campaign that I'm running where I send out little generative goodies twice a year and the next send out is soon, so maybe consider supporting me there. I hope to see you soon and have a great day. Bye!